Welcome back, YouTube users and abusers. I know who you are. Those dark corners. Watching them, them videos. Them kitty videos. I know. I do it too. Alright, today we're going to learn. We're going to learn a lesson in airbrushing. <laughs> who figured? You can see behind me. My next project is a fairing. It's actually a full-on Harley Davidson. Um, I've got fairing, I've got fenders, I've got saddlebags, tank, side covers, oh man, too many pieces to count. But we're going to focus on the fairing. Um, his idea is the P-40 Warhawk, the fighter plane of the old world wars. Um, he sent me some reference, so we're going to go over that. Like usual, first things first, I'm going to go over the tools and what we'll be using today. Check it out. Alright. There's our canvas. As usual, I got my cutting board. I got my mirror, which is really going to come in handy because I'll be painting a mirror image from one side to the other. What better way to paint a mirror image than to have a mirror? My handy French curve stencil, pen, pencil... Um, exacto knife, cutting board, mixing tray for uh, my paintbrush for detail work. I've got my transparent water-based paints, and I've got my opaque water-based paints. Um, brushes, shot glass for mixing, cleaning brushes, masking tape, pinstripe tape. Uh, one thing I didn't include in my last video was Q-tips. Um, one of my favorite little erasers whenever you have a little slip up, give them some saliva and just kind of slowly and cautiously wipe off whatever I need to. Uh, we got the ruler. Here's what I was alluding to. The reference. Alright, this is uh, the concept drawing that we came up with. Didn't spend a lot of time. 10 minutes max. Um, it's just so that I have an idea of what he wants. He has an idea that I have the right idea. Alright, so this is some of the reference. This is what he sent me. This is the P-40 Warhawk. Um, on the fairing, we will be doing the shark teeth and eyeball. Um, ooh, darn it. Secrets out. Spilled the beans too early. Alright, this was some more of his reference. Um, I called him back. We, we discussed it a little further. And we want to make this bike gnarly. Gnarly with a capital G. So, I talked him into doing realistic shark teeth. We're going to keep this uh, a little more grungy, dirty. We're going to have bullet holes in this thing. So, I mean, there's no reason to have this nice, clean, stenciled look that everybody else is going with. And plus, we want something different. So, that's what we're going to do today. We are going to do some sketching. I'm going to draw out my shape on one side to where I'm happy with it. I will be using tracing paper, transfer paper, and I'll trace it on one side, flip it over, and burnish it to the other side. I'll do my drawings, I'll get something I'm happy with, and uh, I'll bring you guys back in, and we'll discuss. Alright, one thing I should have mentioned is uh, this little doohickey, this little slap right in there. Um, secondary piece but it's got to be painted all the same so I'll put it into the drawings I'll take it out to paint it but I'll make sure everything's lined up um yeah there you go that's what that is for those of you who are wondering and there we have it bam gnarly full on snaggle to shark we've got some exhaust pipes kicking out the side and uh, a smaller, smaller, more fierce eyeball. Alright, as you may also notice, I gave him a little nostril. And it's just an open port or a vent. Same thing that you see on the, on the front of the planes. Just to give it more of a plane effect. But we're still going to have some gnarly scars come up the mouth of this guy. This is all going to be gums right here with the teeth coming down. Possibly a broken tooth. I'm not sure how we're going to sort that out just yet. But as we get going, it'll come through. Take my trace of paper. Line it up. Tight. 
Tag it down in a couple areas. Alright, and you're going to notice your paper isn't going to want to lay flat on your curved surfaces. So what I typically do is just take my tape, rip it up into little slivers, piece of paper, fold it. It's not going to be perfect, but this is just to get it from one side to the other. You can always adjust it later on. Grab your handy pencil, handy dandy, and trace it out. Right now for my tracing paper, I want as much detail on here as possible. And there you have it. So I got it all traced out. I did have to add another little piece of paper here to extend it so I could get to my middle. Um, I always draw myself a center line. A little trick that I use is I'll fold my tracing paper right against that center line. I'll run my tape against that center line as well. So when I'm ready to flip her over, that'll stay and that'll hold it exactly at my center. Everything else will just transfer from there. Um, I also like to follow some body line. Um, if you got anything, you know, a hole that's going to be on both sides, use it. Use it to your advantage. The end of the piece, map it all out. Just run, a, run your pencil across there quickly. And areas where your tra tracing paper doesn't quite go all the way to the edge, just run a quick ruler and draw a straight line so that you know when you're on your other side, nine inches straight across, right to that corner, 6.5 straight to the bottom. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. So what I do here is I take the tape off and I put it exactly where it is but reverse on the other side of the paper. That way when I pull it over to the other side, I know I'm going to have somewhere to stick that tape. I know it's going to line up. And there you have it. You're ready to burnish. Just grab my pen. Just going to trace out every one of those lines. Now I prefer to use a ballpoint pen, just the way it rolls over the paper. Sometimes a pencil can get caught and tear it. But if you're going to transfer this a third, maybe a fourth time, use a pencil. Right now if I were to try to burnish this from the other side, that pen isn't going to transfer on anything else, so you'd have to have that lead on the backing. Just a little tip. Alright. Peel this guy off, but keep him somewhere safe. You're going to need him again. And there you have it. Too much glare. There you have too much glare. Now you can go over those lines if you need to. But that's a transfer. That's a burnish. Both sides are now complete. Quick side note about these little uh, exhaust pipes here. I only drew one. I drew one, traced it onto my tracing paper, burnished it, burnished again, burnished it the third time. So when you're doing something like that, having a repeating image, draw it once. Save some time. Um, there's a couple different ways I can go from here. I can cut just my outline, peel it, spray the whole thing white, and then mask my teeth off, save them, spray the gums red, mask those off, save them, spray the black, call it done. Um, being as I have everything drawn, it seems like a waste of time for me to do another transferring, but I already have it all on there. So the other way you can do this, I'm not picking my nose, it didn't go up, you didn't see that go up, is I'm going to cut out all these lines. I'm going to cut them out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel out my teeth. I'm just going to stick them on my window here. Save them. And then when my teeth are sprayed white, I'm going to peel them off my window. Stick them back down. Reuse them. 
Uh, it's a bit of a time saver. Like I said, I've gone so far on this, I'd hate to just waste all the time and just cut it all out, lose it, re have to redraw it. So, let's work smarter, not harder. And uh, I'm going to kind of do a paint by number. We're going to start with the whites still. Um, work with our teeth first, then into our gums. Once those are safely masked off, then we spray our black. I feel like I'm talking a lot here. Yeah, I'm talking a lot. All right. All right, guys. So move your piece around. Get it to where it's comfortable. Don't over extenuate yourself when you're trying to make cuts here. And when you are doing your cuts, try to always pull towards your points if you can. Not always. It's not always the case. But whenever you can, try to pull towards your points. It prevents peeling. Little tip. Enjoy. All right. So I got my first row of teeth peeled off. I just slapped them on my mirror. Um, that way, once I have this painted, I can just peel them off, stick them back on, and that'll save my white when I move on to my red behind it, my gums and my tongue, and when I move on to the black behind that. So I'll also do the same thing with my tongue, <laughs> my tongue, the tongue, and I'll, uh, I'll cut it out, I'll stick it on here, and then when I'm done spraying it, I'll just pop back on there, that way you're not doing double cuts on top of your edges, sometimes you start cutting that twice and you can risk serious peeling problems. So I'm going to continue on and I'll bring you guys back. And there you have it. Alright guys, so I figured we'll do a couple different uh, processes on this one. Being as I've got the repeating pattern up here for the exhaust, I'm going to accomplish that with stencils. So there's not going to be a lot of masking and remasking. Um, with the teeth, however, everything being individual and I want hard, crisp edges, there will be the remasking. So as I alluded to earlier, I did cut out all my teeth and I just... Place them on a mirror, plant of glass, just somewhere to save them. Put it out of the way, keep it safe. You're going to want to use those later when you got your teeth sprayed and they're all dry. You're going to slap those back on and mask it. So I'm going to go in with a fairly thinned out white right now. Um, I'm not going to build it up too heavy. I'm actually just going to start building in my tones for my teeth. And uh, probably even allow some of this green to fight through it before I call it done and I go in with my darker tones. Quit staring at me. As you may notice, I had a peeling issue. All right, so my green paint lifted up, nothing left. So what I did is I lifted everything that was loose and took it right off. I'm gonna monitor this edge when I go to peel up my gums. And if it lifts again, then we take it off and we sand it. Um, you just can't leave that stuff laying on there loose, not attached to anything, so it's gotta come off. I'll also monitor this edge when I peel back for the black. It's going to be black underneath anyways, so whatever peels back, give it a quick sanding so there's no harsh edges. And apply your paint. Pretend like it never even happened. Cool. Yeah, so there's just too much information to get it all out in one video. So, stay tuned for part two. Like, follow, subscribe. Cheers, much love, guys.